Okay. Um, uh, so, um, so the plan is, is essentially you ask questions, and uh, if there are no further questions, we will be revisiting each of the students that are currently online and uh, go through their project and see what, what uh, we have for feedback so that you can achieve your best for uh, the final submission. Are there any questions? So if there's no any uh, no uh, no questions, <clears throat> there's a question about undergraduates and no programming. There is no penalty for undergraduates. If you do not have programming, you you can still get the top grade. Oh, remember when you're a graduate student, you get a half point deduction for this. Yes. So, so A minus would be in a graduate case, your best grade, an undergraduate can get stored in A. Any other questions? So why don't we uh, get started with Mansuk? So I start my, my screen share. And uh, go to cyber training, go to the reports, and uh, then we look at Mansuk, right? Mansuk, here we go. And as you see, as this is, we have now um, a, a report check. Let me just uh, try to showcase you on one example, what happens when you have a failed report check. Let's take here, for example, this particular student that has a failing report check. We uh, go to this um, icon, it's a button. There are now two checks. One is a status check and one is a report check. So we can go to report check. And here we see uh, one item is failing. So we go to this particular report check. We go to build. And in build, you see the one check. And here you see, for example, the error. Um, and here it says um, line 32, we found I in your report. Please do not use I. And it says this has been found in line number 32. So. Um, um, Maybe my script is wrong or the student has indeed really used I, uh, but it actually showcases you some errors. Let me show you on uh, another report. Maybe it's a little bit more exciting if we go to a to one that may be having more errors in it. And I don't know if we have one of those. Let's just pick a random one here and go to this one. We go to report check. We go to the last failed one. We go to build, and here you see the images. So in this student, student has apparently made a consistent error while not including the images correctly. We can now take, for example, look in line 81 of this particular report. So this was 339. Um, I can go to the project. I can go to this project thing. And if I edit this here, Naturally, now something happens with Zoom, uh, so interfered in my in my thing. So if I now go to line number eighty-one, it actually showcases you that this particular student is not not following our template of including images. Furthermore, he has not used, for example, um, a caption underneath the the uh, the image so that he can refer to it from within the text. <clears throat> so uh, let's go back to uh, cyber training and then um, we uh, go to uh, the page. What, um, no, remember we, we were on that cyber training page, we were in reports and we wanted to look at Man Suk's um, <clears throat> document. And there's now a new icon also here that's the edit button that used to be at the end is now here in front, or you can just simply click on the title. So let's take a look what <clears throat> this particular document shows. So this looks all pretty good, but um, and we see here that uh, the student may have not used 
exactly the template, uh, but this may be already uh, updated by him. Um, here, um, one of the reasons probably why he got this is because um, the abstract is missing. So um, please include your abstract. So the, um, uh, the document also includes a section plan, which should be in the final submission be removed into a plan.md document because we don't need a plan to see in the final document. We see, need to see the final document. Um, then um, uh, apparently some sections have been done. So the student is doing uh, really good, good because they're using here these references. And uh, here, as you can see, this is, there's a space missing here. Um, uh, just, just include the space in front of it. Um, you can't have a section that doesn't have any text in it. So I would say this is, this is, you, need, you need to be putting here to do in there so that you know, so that the TAs know that you're still working on this particular section and no conclusion is provided. But here um, it looks like that uh, the other portions are actually pretty good for the references. So do you have any questions concerning your project? Uh, this is GP Gregor. I, I have a, a question, uh, two questions actually out of curiosity. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, uh, the first question is regarding the keywords. I, I remember there was an instruction where um, uh, we were supposed to keep all the keywords in lowercase. So yes. um, was there any any idea behind that? Like uh, the automation would work properly if you keep all the I, I, I will have it. I will have at one point uh, a script that mm -hmm. adds uh, tags into your um, into your document. And these tags are then being used as an index within the website. So you would be then clicking, be able to, for example, click on betting and then all reports this betting would show up. Understood. Uh, my second question was, um, I noticed that I had a third level heading in my report. So my project is 326. And, and we'll in go the... to 326 in a second. So let's just go, let's just stick with um, uh, Mansuk. Mansuk, do you okay. have any question? Yeah, you know, little things like this here. It's obvious, right? But do you have any questions? How do you complete uh, complete your project? Okay, so um, I don't hear back from him. Let's just take another look at his project. Uh, there is, for example, since this is a project, this project ought to have a Python program. Since there's no Python program provided, this particular student needs to make a decision if he's doing a, a project or a report. Typically projects with programming are easier than reports in my view, um, uh, because reports are more wordy and they require lots of background analysis. Uh, there is time-wise no difference between if you write a report or a project. Um, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Gregor. I think Mansuk, uh, his mic is not working. So maybe he's asking the question in the chat. Yeah, I can't see the chat. Can someone tell me the question? Okay. Um, can I read it for you? Uh, I can't. I can't. I, I, right now, uh, it doesn't show. If you can read it, that would be great. Yeah. So okay. So his his first question was if if I don't add any uh, add a programming portion to my report, how significantly different does my report have to be? Uh, it's substantially different because you will have to do um, a, um, a survey or um, a review of a particular section or, or, or topic. And uh, that review includes substantial literature review. And um, uh, you need to be reading a couple more papers and you need to be showcasing, okay, this is what the field is doing. And um, you will be telling telling us all the wonderful things that um, big data does for that particular topic that you have. I mean, the essential difference is the programming project has a real focus for the report, which as Gregor says, actually makes it slightly easier to write it because you, you have, it's confined. If you don't have the programming part, then you need to have a 
broader context and do this some more review work and things like that. Yeah, I so from what I've seen is this is um, the students that actually did uh, a report that contacted me with questions. They had a very difficult time uh, with their reports. I, I actually gave them the recommendation, why don't you do a project instead? Uh, but um, some uh, don't want to do that and that's fine. But you know, the report is longer for that particular purpose because you have to substitute basically the programming assignment. But of course reports are just what papers are and people write lots of papers. So it's not an, it's not an arcane skill to write a report. It's just, it's just actually harder to do something when there isn't a clear focus, if there is, a, which there is for a programming project. Yeah, and as okay. Jeffrey points out the focus, the focus may come when you do a comprehensive analysis of the field while looking at many different papers. And uh, in my view, if your report has a single reference in the background, that's not a report. That's a paper review because that's, you, you just review one paper. You are not, you are not analyzing the field. Yeah, I think we would like a field review, or well, not not the whole field, but a subset of the field. Yeah, I would say it's uh, important papers, and what's important that is up to you to decide. Like, let's take some. Uh, let, let's take this talk I haven't given on uh, deep learning for images. There, the whole field deep learning for images. That's a very big field. But if you did. And if you do um, deep learning for images as reported in one COVID paper, that's too small. If you do deep learning for images in COVID, that's probably a large enough field and enough papers you could write a serious, a serious um, report for this this uh, course. Yeah. Okay. So I think we. Uh... This was really an important uh, feedback that Jeffrey gave. Uh, please keep that in mind. And I think what we need to do is, is, is we need to be making sure that all the students that have not attended this lecture um, uh, listen uh, to this lecture. Yeah. Uh, so, so there was another question from him. Uh, so are his citations okay? So the point he's trying to make is- uh, which, uh, the, This was this okay. paper, right? Yeah, same paper. So there were some sources uh, was listed. There are no authors listed for those and uh, for the few sources. Well, again, if if this is an uh, if this is a, re a a project, I think these references are okay. If this is a report, he will have to evaluate if these references are sufficient to meet the criteria that Jeffrey has pointed out. Yeah, I was going to have a criteria of six papers, and this is essentially six papers. So as long as these are good references, I would say the scope is okay. But it's on the borderline. Yeah. So ten, the one thing... Ten papers is safer. The one thing is, is, is as this particular student is still not sure if he wants to do a paper or a project, why don't you add to the top here after your after your name, uh, type colon, and then you say project and report, because at one point I have to uh, rename uh, this to a report or a project. But I want don't want to do this all the time. I just want to do this when you finally have decided to do that. Is there any other question from the student? Uh, no. Okay, good. So then uh, let's go back and um, I go back to the um, main cyber training website and the reports. And uh, if someone could be so kind to suggest now who's coming next. I mean, you, you just spoke up, so why don't we do your paper next? Yeah, uh, my name is Ganga Prasad. My uh, Which paper number? is 326. 326. Oops, uh, sorry, I, I uh, messed this up. 
326. Uh, um, so uh, one thing from papers that I know, it's highly unusual that you do actually enumerated uh, items in an abstract. So just do bracket open one, bracket open two in your abstract so that it's just a paragraph. But it's not okay. a big deal. It's not a big deal. We will not give you any point deductions if you don't do this. So as you can see, as this is, I go now in the in the edit mode because it's easier for me to see the markdown errors from there. Uh, so I, I go in here, and as you can see, as this, um, uh, you have done a good job of putting the references in here. So this is all worked out fine. The images are wonderful here. One of the things is this is, is did you create this image yourself? No, you did not. Uh, no. See, there is. Uh, in citation here where this image comes from. However, you need to be putting a citation here at the end um, okay. uh, um, and put that in and into your reference section. That would be the proper way of citing a paper that you simply copied from somewhere. Okay. okay. The same thing here with this image. If you copied this from somewhere and have not self-created, then you need to be putting a citation in here. Okay. Um, so here is a very good example of what a lot of students don't do, but which you do did excellently. Uh, you created a figure number three and excellently pointed out figure three shows, you know, it shows really what you have, have uh, displayed there. And it refers to the figure by number. And we still see some people saying figure above and below. And be reminded that when we create sometimes PDFs out of them, the figures actually are moving uh, into different locations. And they're no longer above or below. Uh, so therefore, we never use the word above or below. And there is a, even a checker uh, in, in the report check. I have um, a check in there. If you, if you use figure above, figure below, but it doesn't check for below or above the words alone. So it's still possible that you, that you could misuse this, but you did, did an excellent job here. Yeah, I like, I like this picture very much. <laughs> so, so this is, uh, uh, this, uh, the, I, 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 I looked at this and thought this was a great picture, you know, it made my day. Uh, Thank you. Uh, so, um, so this paper structurally is very goodly um, informed. Also, uh, the number of references are uh, sufficient. One of the things that we don't yet know here is, and this is uh, something that I may have sent out previously, uh, uh, we don't see a, a link to your uh, project um, code. So there needs to be somewhere in your thing a section. This is what I calculate. And um, in that what you calculate, there needs to be a reference or a URL pointer to your code so that we don't have to do this and go to project and see, OK, where is your code now? Because it lays here in the subdirectory. This needs to be a direct link in your report so that the TAs, when they read this, they can easily jump to your uh, to your IPython notebook, right? So, um, yeah, and as uh, uh, you, you have done here um, um, uh, some good programming, I guess, and um, it looks like that you have fulfilled the requirement for the class. One of the things that you need to be making sure is this is when you are doing your model here, um, I have seen some students uh, um, to just do a, histo histo a histogram uh, of a data set. So they downloaded a data set and then they said, okay, you know, these are the most, most things of this, these are the most things of that, these are the most things of the other thing. But beyond the histogram, they haven't actually done anything. The purpose of the class was is, is that you also are being exposed to some of the methods that are being used in uh, big data analysis so that you beyond just displaying the properties of the data can actually do an analysis, a regression analysis, a clustering, an LSTM algorithm uh, using deep learning and stuff like that. 
And so it's it's uh, important for me to understand, and you can comment now what if you did that or if this is just a history, a histogram that you are analyzing. Okay, thank you. I, so would you be able to comment right now in words what you did? Uh, so you, you want me to explain the code you have me? No, no, I just would like to hear a simple thing. Did you do more than a histogram? Uh, okay, so that, the thing that I tried to do was uh, I uh, tried to uh, use the empirical uh, benchmarking on the attributes that I found in the data set. But there was a comment uh, in my report uh, asking that, uh, am I considering any other social uh, economic factors? So I tried to find um, the other attributes so that I can uh, relate those things, but I was not able to find the, uh, some good attributes around that. So, so show, me uh, in, will... show me in your code where you do the uh, some prediction or some analysis other uh, than okay, mean so... and average. Where should I go? Uh, Okay, if you just scroll a bit down, so I just try to do a benchmarking where I'm taking uh, the top uh, te top 10 values of the attribute and then uh, the average of the whole set and uh, there is the benchmarking that I'm trying to do. But I was unable to get some other attributes so that I can relate with them. If you scroll down a bit. Okay, yes. And, uh, oh yeah, I remember now, I actually looked at this report and I made a comment to this uh, because when you when you looked at the data that you presented, uh, it showed uh, the data here um, in absolute total values of total Buffalo, total male and so forth, based on the regions within India. But the regions within India have um, different uh, sizes. You can actually look up in India, how many people are in a particular region. So they have actually statistics about this. They also have statistics about how, the, how big the region actually is. And um, if you look at the agri uh, agricultural data, they also have a percentage of uh, how much is there versus um, uh, you know, rural area versus um, agricultural area. And uh, so uh, let me give you an example. Let's assume you, you were to say um, in uh, New York City, we have uh, um, uh, a thousand uh, COVID cases. And then you say uh, in, um, uh, in Bloomington, Indiana, we have uh, uh, 50 COVID cases. Now, often we ask ourselves, how does this relate to the percentage within, uh, within the population? Not just the absolute numbers. So you wouldn't be able to just say, it's okay, in, in New York, COVID is, is significantly worse than in Bloomington, which is, which is the case. But what is if the amount of population in Bloomington that have COVID is higher than in New York, it would then show that if you are in, in Bloomington, the risk of obtaining COVID is higher than the risk of obtaining COVID maybe in New York City at, at this particular period in time. The same is valid for your analysis here. When you take a look at the analysis, this is uh, just the list of the totals that you have uh, have done, uh, but there is no correlation being made to other information that you can obtain from India that uh, essentially says this is, is this related to some, you know, uh, just is ultra parish the reason why there are so many buffaloes in there because the region is bigger than the next region or not, right? So you need to be doing much more analysis on what you have done. Okay, I got it, yeah. yeah. So right now it looks like it's just a histogram and uh, from, from, the, uh, from the data description that you, that you actually obtain, you, as you said, you just have printed the 10 top values, but, but there is no further analysis there. Okay, good, cool. So uh, let's move to the next student if there's no further question on this, or if someone uh, else has a question concerning what, this paper. What, oh, sorry, one last question I had. So it was regarding the uh, headings. So I noticed that I have a third level heading in my report, but um, it was not showing in the table of content. <clears throat> yeah, so let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Um, and this is likely easy to fix. 
as you know, the first level, level has a single hash. The next level has a second hash. The abstract is mm -hmm. the only one that doesn't have any number. And then all the other ones have numbers. So if you now take a look where your third level heading was, do you remember where it was? Um, Here? The fourth, yes. Yeah. It, it, it looks like that maybe, uh, maybe they have made a limit to three hashes to three subsections. Um, then just use three subsections, try to, uh, um, try to go with that. Yeah, I don't know, actually. I really don't know if they don't show up. But they showed up though. Four point three point one. I thought that they showed up. So which one doesn't show up? I, I think I, I removed it. Maybe I'll just revisit once and I'll just add it. Uh, please remember that I also possibly have to fix that. So. So you you may have that, that, that's at right. one point, but I just went ahead and I, I I I said instead of sending you a complicated email, I just went ahead and fixed it for you. Yeah, while I work on this project, I understand that though you have the content, it's very much difficult to make sure that you are putting everything right. So yeah. writing a paper is not an easy job. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, as I said, it, is, it's, it becomes easy if you follow our template, right? Uh, if you yeah, make your own true. rules, then uh, mm -hmm. it becomes a little bit more elaborate. That's because yeah, you, that, you have that's to those. Right. So, okay, I good. Thank uh, you. Good. So let's uh, uh, let's go to the next student. Uh, so we go to reports. Who wants to go next? Which number can I type in? And again, I don't see the chat window at this time. So no one left anymore. We have eight people here. So can can someone please speak up? So how do we? Uh, how um, why don't we do go with? I see now um, there is GP. So let's go with GP. That was me. That was me. Three twenty six. And let's go with Fauzon. And I apologize if I pronounce your name wrong. That that's that's okay. Yeah. That is my short version of name. So uh, yeah. Uh, so this is the stock price prediction project here. As you can see, this, is, this, this, this looks all good. And uh, we found that um, you are sometimes uh, using um, file names that cause for our automatic st uh, scripts some issues. Please don't use spaces or strange characters in your file names. That will be important, you know. Um, uh, including your data files. So when we look over this, this looks good, but, uh, uh, no, not but, and you even included here your uh, citations. So all of the uh, thing uh, looks from the format good. Naturally here, this particular section, which we are now looking for is empty. So it would be super cool if you um, were to do this. So one of the things that I see here is, is, is that you are using a bidirectional gated brew, uh, a bid brew, uh, which is super cool. So I like this. Um, this is this is excellent. I, I I think if you were to do this, this would be a fantastic project. Um, now here, as you can see, is this should be URLs and they should be cited in the reference section in here. So you need to be including them in your reference section. So now let's take a look at the um, at the um, format. Uh, so we, we have all of the stuff here. So I don't see any, any issue with your paper from the format. So now let's take a look at your project. And uh, you already have your um, um, code in there. So let's just go to one of them. And sometimes these things don't show up because the code may be just be too, too large. And um, so we see that you're using scikit-learn to, um, uh, to use as part of your stock price thing. And this is, I think, uh, the standard scikit-learn stock price thing uh, example. Is that correct? So you have taken this from somewhere. Is this correct? Yeah, so this is, this is not finished yet because yeah. I still try to change some of my codes here. You can see that there are some that some codes that I, that I put comment on because yeah. yeah, I'm still 
I'm still trying to find the best way to do this. So just make sure that important it is if you, for example, take someone else's script from the network, from the internet, and uh, you were to just replicate this, that you actually state this in your report. That cannot be a, a super cool report, obviously. And then you yeah. describe what you have enhanced from that uh, script or from the um, uh, analysis that you have found, and you go in into detail. You know, I've started with this, but I've enhanced it in this particular form so that we can actually see where this comes from. And the reason why I'm pointing out this is I have actually seen that graph before. So, um, in, uh, in no, it's it's oh. a graph of uh, in Indonesian stock exchange composite. So that's why it is a uh, it is a okay. uh, usual. Maybe graph. maybe then I I looked at your report before and I remembered it. So sorry for for, for that. So um, um, yeah. That, that's that's cool. So um, I think you are on the right track. Um, yeah, just but... make sure that you, that you uh, because the B guru and, and others are not necessarily as easy to do. And in your case, I think what you need to also do is this is, um, and also the previous student, uh, we have so far no students that have actually done a benchmark, you know, essentially how fast is it to do your analysis. So make sure that you include that and for that, we uh, recommend that you use for sequential calculations, the cloud mesh um, stopwatch or, or benchmark uh, library. And uh, that library is not threat safe. So therefore I say this is a sequential. Uh, so just make, make sure you do this. This includes, for example, how long does it take to download the data? Uh, how long does it take to do calculation X or Y? You know, so that that that's an important part of, of your paper. Um, you don't have to um, measure every single thing, but if you do, for example, a prediction with Bigu, you want to know how long does it actually take to do the training, and how long does it actually take to do the prediction. Okay, thank you for the feedback. Any other question from you? Uh, actually, no, because. Yeah, like I said before, I'm still, I haven't finished my model yet. So yeah, I'm still focusing on finishing this project. Okay, good. So uh, then uh, we had GP, then uh, 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 Kunal. And again, I apologize if I pronounce your name wrong. You may want to tell us what your proper, what the proper pronunciation is. No, that's right. Okay. Um, so let's just uh, search for uh, Kunal. And now you can see why, why we have this uh, the system rather than uh, just looking into Canvas because it's it's really cool for you to because you can also do that comparison with any other paper that you can actually see here. So now let's take a look at your work. So and I see already it's, it's great. You followed the, <laughs> the, um, uh, the template. Uh, you have a background section, which is really good. And I really remember that I, I tried to put this in into mass JX. So don't worry about it. There is a bug in, in uh, the JavaScript libraries that we use. Uh, keep, it, keep it exactly like you have it here. This is, this is wonderful. This is just, uh, um, uh, just remove the space there here between the alpha and the bracket. You have the uh, references. You have a description of the data set, but there is an issue here. The data set section needs to have a citation where the data is actually coming from. It doesn't have this particular section, uh, a citation in there. It's just as, for example, you have here this one. Right. right. So there yeah, needs I to have be some uh, references. I forgot. Yeah, there needs the to be citation. somewhere a reference. The, um, uh, then I see that you started doing the um, analysis. So one of the things that um, an editor once told to me is, is if you have a, sub, a, um, a high level section and you get another section underneath, there must be text between those. You can't just have a new subsection without text in between. And okay. um, so that's one of, the, one of the rules. Then I would say this should be section 5.1 and 5.2 so that we can you can refer to it easier in 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 the text okay and you're probably the only one who's allowed to use i in your paper 
if for some reason uh, that would be um, uh, kicking off here a check report false, uh, then um, you you should be just safely ignoring that, right? Because if you use I as one of your uh, things um, in import, as you can see, this does not render properly. So you have to figure out how to render this. Don't make an image. So I would say this is, is you need to be breaking this up into the next line. All right. See. So what what I would say is this is this, this, this the uh, you know just just do it as normal text like here. I with, think that was supposed to be a code block. It is a code block, but the problem is this is your code block is too long. All right. Right. Just just make sure that. Typically, what you do is, is you make sure that this is not longer than 79 characters. Then, then it typically renders properly. OK. Um, here, naturally, as you can see, commas are missing, uh, spaces are missing, so stuff like this. And here, the table, you don't change. You just keep the table like it, it is. One has to, has to properly scroll, scroll through this here, right? Um, and then you do the right thing, but the caption needs to come on top of the table. Figures okay. come below, tables come above. This image I would be increasing in size because we can't, we can't figure out what it means. Yeah, so this looks all very good. And then I do the, um, the check on the, on the source. Yeah, and as you as you see when we when we added this this here, so let me just go in here. Um, the subsections that you have introduced. So first of all, you you also make here. Um, this is actually a markdown error. The indentation of the subsequent um, items are aligned with the first letter in in the previous line. As you can see here, the next dash is aligned with this. It's not like this. Okay, so just make sure that from now on you do these kind of things. And so then we, when we have this here, this should be then uh, 5.1. And as we have seen from the other student, that may not work, 5.1. Uh, uh, something we went here. This happens to me all the time. There's some automatic spell completion going on. And uh, I sometimes miss that. And then I'm sending out an email message. And naturally, you know, you should be making an empty line in here, right? Without the empty line, this thing cannot be detected. And then you need to be putting here 5.1.2 and, and so forth, right? All right. So, and I would, I would do something like this here. Right, and then um, if you if you want to do this, I would just go ahead and do it this way. Right, okay. so this would be, I think, an, a, a very good way of displaying this information. Uh, as you know, writing tables in HTML in, in Markdown is not as easy as one may think. Um, um, and um, uh, you need to be determining if you want to have that many columns or if you want to have a table that's smaller, that's up to you. And uh, here again, you know, you have these things uh, sticking out. Yeah, other than that, that looks really good to us. So well, let's take a look at your code. Again, you need to have a link in your project in, in your document to the code. And um, so we, we see now two things. So you want to measure the time it takes to get the data and put that in into your report. That seems awfully complicated. Is it really that complicated to get the data? Yeah, because uh, I was getting the data from two different sources. Uh, you have described that in your pap paper, right? Yeah. Good, because that probably gives you some bonus points or people will like that, that you have not just one data source.
I think I still haven't uploaded my most current. Yeah, just make notebook. sure when you upload this and you have a hundred thousand data points <laughs> that you yeah. clear the cache of your browser because otherwise you will be running into a limitation of your um, uh, markdown file. The one way of, um, yeah, so, so just be careful with this. So in what statistical uh, analysis are you using here? So these are just averages. Okay. I'm not not still analyze. exploring uh, so you're still different exploring. machine learning techniques. I'm okay. not too familiar Good. with how to do that, so. Good, okay, so, uh, so I think uh, that's where you should be focusing on. Just make sure that you do this, the small formatting issues get them out of the way so that you have never to think about formatting again. And then you can uh, work on your, on your uh, program and include that program into your document. Make sure you, you write about, you know, or you have multiple data. This is my analysis that I'm using. These are the algorithms that I am applying. This is potentially my hypothesis that I actually wanted to express. And did I achieve my hypothesis or you don't have to use the word hypothesis with our work or with, with this work, um, um, this was supposed to be predicted or whatever. Um, I have achieved that goal. I have not achieved that goal at one point. That's really important. And please right. remember that we had one particular group that did not understand that uh, if they can't achieve it, but they, um, they provided good algorithms and good um, uh, analyses that uh, they used, but they cannot achieve their originally set out goal, that that is not a negative in the report. It's actually a positive in the report because it's, they say, okay, we used all these algorithms here and we couldn't actually figure it out how to do it. And right. um, that actually in indicates that uh, the big data that they used the, in conjunction with the algorithms or analysis that they used did not necessarily succeed. Good. So this is uh, this is this is very good. Um, so let's just uh, go to any other question on your side. Um, I just had the question for why it's showing up in the will not be reviewed section on the cyber training site. Uh, so you are this particular student, right? And uh, what 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 are you not? Uh, so it's on the cyber training report site. Okay, so let me go go there and then uh, we figure out what the issue is. It's so, in the three for one. Will not be, yeah. It says it will not be reviewed. Uh, yeah, sure that's just uh, that's just a uh, um, uh, thing. Is this is I will send myself an email message today. As this is to move three for one. Uh, Possibly when, when I made that thing, there wasn't absolutely anything there, okay? Good, so I will fix that. Okay, that's all. Good, so then, uh, then we have, I believe, a Tau. Yeah, let's go back to the... Yeah, uh, it's 339, and uh, I still didn't get what's your point about uh, um, the image problem. Um, okay, let's take a look. And I upload a new one. I don't. Oh, yeah. So um, uh, uh, look this image here. That's not a proper image inclusion. Okay. And uh, what what you need to do is this is, is you need to go to report three twelve, which I often fix. So this is the sample markdown mark, uh, report uh, markdown. So oh. you go in here and you locate where they have an image, right? So now we locate where they have an image. Um, here is an image. Okay, I'll copy this. Uh, and, and in this case, we put three images in. So let's copy the whole thing here. Uh, sorry, I copied this. Now let's go back to your report. Um, which number was this? 339? 
three three nine. I think I already changed it, but it just didn't uh, like reflect in the. Um, it will web. never. It will never reflect. It will only reflect in uh, in here, um, uh, because I have to the other web page. I have to create by hand. And the reason why I do this, I have to do this, is because some students are not following the markdown rules. And if, okay. if they check something in that doesn't is not marked down, it will break the website. And so we can't we can't do this. So um, yeah. So now uh, if you look at this um, and we, we compare this, right? So you have three three nine. There's blob. This is not what this website this this thing looks like, right? So if you if you look at this this thing here uh, and compare this, and uh, so this is coming from the other report, so we we have to have here uh, like caption to do. So you have to write uh, you have to write about how to do this. And now you now now compare this. Okay, so here you have this, and here you have this. So if I were to copy this thing here. And uh, where to replace your, your thing here, and then replace it as three three nine. Mm -hmm. uh, this then looks dissimilar, right? So we have HTTPS. Yeah. So this is so I think this looks similar, and um, this would be um, you know figure. Uh, Maybe figure two. Figure I don't know. Yeah, figure, figure two, right? So, but uh, the short uh, the short for asin is uh, like the following. That is not a proper sentence. Is shown shown in uh, figure two, right? So mm -hmm. now now we have a proper reference to this. And you need to be still identifying a proper caption for this. So let's save this. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we save this, we should be seeing hopefully that the image shows up. Figure two, right here. Yeah. So now the one thing is, 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 is you're showing this screenshot. Mm -hmm. There is no reason to show the screenshot. Why don't you go ahead and, and copy the actual text that is in the screenshot. The COVID-19 test, you know you might be waiting several days oh. for appointment. It is getting harder to find so, a So what you suggest is instead of using the image, I can actually copy and paste and that or even come for my report, right? That's correct. And then you keep it in your in the figure. You just make it in um, in, um, in uh, code block, but underneath mm -hmm. the code block, you still have the figure this mm -hmm. way, you still refer to the figure, making it easy to, to describe, but people could actually read what you have. Oh, so instead of just, uh, so you will suggest like, I have the code here, but not like the image or copy and paste the result. Uh, yeah, let me just go once more and, and, and um, go in, in this thing here. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, where was figure two? Figure two. So now, right now you have this image. I don't think there yeah. is a need for this image. I um, you had some attributes there. Mm -hmm. uh, X, Y, Z, uh, colon, A, B, C, right? Um, mm -hmm. There may be another one, uh, K, L, M, colon, uh, 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 plane. You know, so this is like you know some random things. Um, I can't remember, remember anymore what that say, uh, looks like. So when you save this, mm -hmm. <laughs> this way, you you uh, showcase your your audience something that they can read versus something that they cannot read. See, this Nova can read, but if you do this in ASCII, like I, I showed to you, then that would be good, right? Okay. Yeah. So you could okay. do the same thing here and then simply break over the lines, right? Because these are simply arrays and these are Python arrays. So it would, if, you, if you capture them 79 characters here, you just break it over, make it easy for you. Don't do these okay. screenshots. The screenshots are typically too complicated anyways. Okay. 
And uh, there is no benefit from anyone seeing the screenshot. Mm -hmm. See, um, see, it's it's fine to maybe uh, describe what you are doing, but um, no one understands what you are doing here. No one understands what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. um, so you really do need to describe what what this actually is. Yeah, I will um, explain it later. It ju yeah. It's just my next step. Yeah, and then here you have a, here is a shortcut for the raw database. I, mm -hmm. I don't think that it's needed to have a, a shortcut for the raw database. Um, I think this is maybe here is a description of mm -hmm. the raw database, but I don't think that there is a need for including this because it's not interesting to show the first field and the last field in an abbreviated fashion. I think describing what is in there mm -hmm. that you have here is more mm -hmm. meaningful than to show, show this thing here. This thing, I, I don't even think is even useful. Like, like you say the table or there's um, screenshot? The image here that, that, you, that you have, the screenshot, okay. the raw okay. database. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's useful, right? Okay, I just want to show like I really clean it because there are many things which is not useful and then it really mm -hmm. took me some time and some you know definition of function to train it and clean it after you mm -hmm. know before I this is, my this is an excellent comment then mm -hmm. what you need to do is this is this um the um the data that we received in raw did not mm -hmm. contain um curated data I implemented a curation, a curation um, and, and data function that did the following. You don't actually have to show the, the output of this. You have to describe what the curation enti uh, entitles. Okay, that's much so more meaningful than just showcase, oh, and here's my curated data, because that's meaning, meaningless. But describing what you curated, that is meaningful. Okay. So just to describe the function, I write it down rather than describe the database. That's correct, for example, yes. Okay. Or you can describe it in words. Sometimes it's easier to describe this in words rather than to describe the function, right? Okay, I just- uh, like, like For example, I have, um, I have gotten a whole database and um, I extracted from the database all entries that had the category gift cards in it. Okay. That would be that would be an equivalent to this particular picture. Okay, I see. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, there there are some other things. This is not I demonstrate this here. So if you take this uh, uh, this thing and um, you type in, for example, Grammarly, um, and I have gotten and gotten quite fond on uh, uh, on this particular tool. So you can create a new document and you can pass in your text in there. And mm -hmm. you will see now here, um, simple um, errors that occur. Like for example, here, there's a space missing. So that uh, a valid training labels, label, you know, now they are reformulating the sentence, you know, uh, you have to read the sentence. Sometimes they actually come up with wrong, wrong positives, but, uh, but there are suggestions. Sometimes they give suggestions that are not um, um, useful. And here, you never use backslash. You, you always use or, right? And invalid is invalid. As you can see, is, 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 there's a dot missing. Um, and and so if you were to use Grammarly, you could be improving the quality of your writing significantly. And I found that uh, this tool is actually better than Microsoft Word in many, many occasions, because um, it, it seems to be um, automatically adapting itself to some AI algorithm. And they, they have some, some really cool AI algorithms that apparently for my style of writing is actually very helpful. And I don't know if this is for your style of writing helpful or if Microsoft Word is better, but definitely use one of them. If you use Microsoft Word, one of the mm -hmm. problems that they have is, is, is they introduce, for example, characters like quote. 
this is a, uh, this is a straight quote, but Microsoft uh, converts them to forward quote and backwards quote, which is not a valid markdown character. The same thing with, uh, with uh, a single uh, backslash or in, in a, a quote like this. So Microsoft does some funky things to them, so you will have to climb, clean them out. Grammarly doesn't have that. You can use these characters without them being automatically corrected by some kind of um, a Microsoft standard that we, we don't technically use in Markdown. So therefore, use Grammarly instead of Microsoft if you can. You can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Any other questions on, on your side? Yeah, so you just to talk without a benchmark. Do you mind if you, uh, you, you seem to list the different kinds of benchmark we can use to calculate our times, but I unfortunately I didn't quite um, listen to them. Would you mind even, you know, make a PS a post about what kind of list of benchmark we can use for calculating each step's time? Let's, let's go in here and search for benchmark. Because benchmark is exactly is uh, more general. Stuff. There is a there is a tip, benchmark. Uh, here is a tip being provided on how to use the benchmark, and what you need to do in order to set this up. And as far as I remember, there's even a video on this being posted. So oh, it's, okay. all in, it's all already in in Piazza. If you have any issues uh, uh, um, concerning this, then I would I would suggest you uh, you let us know. Okay. Um, and think I, I think that's it. But um, also I have some problem with the um, uh, here, here by the way. Uh, just a second. Okay. Here by the way, tip cloud mesh benchmark right. Mm -hmm. So there, if you if you go there. We have provided an elaborate uh, example on how do you do benchmarks in Google Colab. And naturally, if you can do this in Google Colab, you can do this in Python. And here you have uh, the example. Stopwatch start. This is a stopwatch with the name A. Stopwatch mm -hmm. stop. That's the stopwatch uh, with the name A. Um, mm -hmm. This just is for you a flag that you can say, so you can, you can pass along a test and say, if a particular condition exists, you can set this to true or false. In this case, we just don't do a test, we just set it to true. And then we print that benchmark. And when we print the benchmark, it does some cool things. It showcases you the entire operating system. It showcases you um, how many CPUs you have on this, how much memory is active, how much memory is free. Because sometimes you will find that, hey, you know, I, I'm, I don't have any free memory. Why, why does my, my code run for five days, despite the fa fact that my calculation is so small? Maybe you don't have enough memory. And then uh, here is then uh, the printout at the end of that benchmark with this timer that essentially says, okay, this thing's run 3.02 seconds. Now, if you take a look at this, this is a sleep timer here, and it has an import. So naturally this thing will take a little bit more than three seconds, right? Because I have the import and it has to be interpreted. It has to start this timer and stop the timers. So that's not a big deal. This means that you can't measure in milliseconds, basically, right? So, mm -hmm. but the second area is fine. Now, in addition to this, this is a graphical table that we have created for you uh, that you could be potentially passing as markdown into your report I don't think that you need to be copying OS in there or user or node or tag even, or potentially start time or status. But the time may be, may be important. You know, you can delete all this other stuff that you may not need. Um, and uh, in order for you to make it even simpler, we have uh, given you a, a line here that if you were to write down this thing in, in, into a file, you could F grab to, C, uh, to CSV and just obtain that particular information. And then the, the, the second argument is the name of the timer. So you could be f uh, for this particular field and then obtain these values. I have, for example, thousands of timers that I for some of the um, stuff that is that I'm doing. And I know the exact timer name for, for things and I may be only interested in 10. 
and then I have a, um, a program that just f grabs through this and I can convert this to a table. So this is the simplest way of doing a stopwatch. But remember, this is not thread safe. So don't, don't put this stopwatch into a thread. This will not work. Um, then the, another thing is, is, is if you have an even simpler mechanism, here you see there is no function. Let's assume you would have a function and you would like to benchmark a section within this function. Here we, for example, say is, is I would like to benchmark these three, li these three lines, basically. Um, uh, and then I can simply say benchmark start and benchmark stop without defining the name. And the name gets derived from the function name. So all of this I actually do do for you automatically. Same thing in here. Naturally, one, one of the things that you should be thinking about is, is this print statement should probably be moved before the benchmark start. So that's maybe a, an improvement thing because the print statement typically takes a long time. Um, uh, so don't, don't do, the, do lots of print statements when you benchmark this. And then when you take a look, I just execute B and C, and then at the end, I simply do benchmark print. And this is what's coming out. It's exactly like before, but in addition to the A timer, I have now IPython timers B and C that are being added to my table as well as to the CSV table. So this makes benchmarking really super trivial for you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And uh, one of the things that you can see is, is, is there's a slight difference between the time and I explain the difference. This is maybe not obvious to some. To some. This, uh, this is essentially the same code that we have in the other one, right? But the problem, the, the nice thing is, 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 is all of the, the variables and all of the stuff is being actually done on the heap rather than the stack. So if this were to be a numerical calculation, this numerical calculation in the function may actually be faster than the, than the, um, than the calculation that you would do uh, sometimes here in uh, without function definitions. A lot of students don't, don't uh, know about this. This only happens in certain circumstances and you can try this out if this applies for you or not. Uh, but in, in general, if you, if you wrap this into a function, in most cases, uh, the, the, the code runs slightly faster and you see this here. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference because these are exactly the same codes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, so this explains, I think, um, uh, how to do the benchmarks. I think this is a good example. And as you can see, this has been posted uh, 27 days ago. So this is like almost a month ago. Uh, if we have made, actually, this was being posted even before. See the original, yeah. The original post was on September uh, 13th. So. Okay. Um, I will, yeah, try to think about what it can be used in my project. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much. Um, by the way, I see if you can go to the project.md, I find like you still code, like, please use reference and other problems. I think it fixed. So can I delete them or I should keep them? Well, let's take a look at your thing. This was 339, right? Yeah. So let's take a look what uh, what uh, this thing does. So we go to check report. We go to mm -hmm. the first one that fails. Uh, we go to build. And here we get, get now um, the, the errors. And uh, as you see, this is the reason why they fail is because your URLs are simply wrong. Yeah. Right. We so, only, remember, we only fixed one URL. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, here, if you can see the first line of my project, say, please use uh, reference. I think that one is fixed. Uh, uh, oh. If you can go back and see like the, my report. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's fixed. Yeah. yeah. So, so you can, I, you can, then, you, can you can do the following thing. Um, in, um, in this particular case, because it's fixed, I think you can just delete that line mm -hmm. or you can put a little X in there. And uh, when oh. the X comes in here, 
um, mm -hmm. uh, 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 you see there's a check mark there. This way you communicate to the TAs, hey, you know, I've taken care of it. Before your final submission, all of these need to be taken care of and deleted. We had one project yesterday that kept mm -hmm. on deleting uh, these items without fixing them and declaring, hey, I'm finished. I don't want to work on this anymore. And so the, the, the student kept on deleting them and I kept on adding them back in because I didn't see that they were even being taken care of. Um, right. So it's sometimes better to just keep them in for a while. And when you are closer to the December 7th deadline, you just uh, remove them because at that particular time, the hope is, is that you have interfaced with the TAs that look over your project and they are supposed to be doing this on a weekly basis. And mm -hmm. um, as you have seen, as I have, I have uh, probably added a lot of comments to some, some people. And I'm not adding comments to projects uh, when their analysis is yet in question. So if they start doing the analysis, I may take another look at the analysis, but um, uh, so just, just make sure that you properly co explain what the analysis is, because I myself do not have the time to uh, read your code and identify from your code what you're doing. So it needs to be described in here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and technically that's really the, the task of the TAs. Okay, I see. Um, that's all my question for today. Thank you very much. And then as a closing comment, I actually have to point out is this is this, as a student in this class, you have the super benefit, which you may not have in other classes, that the TAs do actually look over your uh, projects and give, uh, give improvement suggestions. This class is not about, oh, well, I'm doing my entire project till the end of the class and one day before the deadline i'm informing the tas that the, that that i have done my project the tas are benefiting from that you are giving them a regular update on your projects because they will then know what your project is about and it will be easier for them to grade because they have already looked over your thing and they see hopefully the improvements of your project over time this reduces on their end the review time and it improves on your end the, have I really achieved the best that I could in the class because you actually get feedback, right? And you don't get any feedback if you, if you don't make any progress over the week or if you don't have any analysis algorithms. So then people will probably just skip your, skip your thing uh, and, and don't comment much. Like for example, in the Buffalo analysis, I think I just put in one comment in there, you know, um, about the, uh, you know, uh, um, about the data, it, it looked like that there wasn't that there needs to be um, there, that there is an opportunity for doing an improvement to the analysis, right? And um, so we don't start doing this um, till we basically see there's already some result being projected. Okay. Yeah, I will try to keep um, weekly updated. Yeah, and then remember, this is a really uh, really um, um, stressful time. I know that there's uh, lots of other classes are having their, their finals. Then there's Thanksgiving going on where maybe family pressure is being put onto you to, to, to buy a turkey and eat a turkey with them. Just, just make sure um, um, uh, if you are in the United States at least, just make sure that you uh, understand uh, where you are. And then if you are hit by uh, health issues, uh, make sure you inform us uh, in timely fashion. Uh, there was also another point that Jeffrey made is, is um, um, the, uh, and this is a 13 week class right now. Uh, we do you a favor, I believe, uh, while extending the deadline um, because you, uh, many students couldn't achieve their best due to the COVID impact and the short period of time for this particular class. And so uh, Jeffrey was generous uh, to give essentially the entire class an extension till December 7th. However, uh, what we have experienced is, 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 is that any student that hasn't really completed their report in the, the way you guys have, have done by December 1st, we typically see that they, that they struggle in the last week so much that they may 
uh, uh, be disappointed about the results that they will get at the end. So therefore, um, my recommendation to all students um, that are online or not have attended this particular class is, 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 is get started now, work on this thing every day or every weekend, uh, make sure that you put in a significant amount of time. Remember this project was supposed to be half uh, or um, uh, was it 40% of your class grade? Calculate what 40% means. If for example, a class that you spend on takes maybe six to nine hours a week, uh, how many hours you have to work on your project. Um, just try to figure out, you know, if you missed working on this project for that amount of time, you may need to be spending some additional time on this. Jeffrey, um, do you have any other comments that you may want to issue? No, you, you've done a very thorough job and people should just ask us if they have any issues. And if you really can't make December 7th, we, will, we can give another extension, but we can't give you a grade. So we'll have to give you an incomplete, but you can then try to remove, then you can remove it. But the, the university is quite strict on when the grades have to be submitted. Yeah, there's one more thing in case uh, you are having a health issue and you have to, or, or some other issue that, that requires you to carry the incomplete into the next semester. Um, uh, our recommendation is, is that you finish the uh, incomplete one month before the next semester is over. Uh, but this is only valid for those who have uh, these health issues. If you don't have these health issues, uh, we do recommend that you finish them um, as soon as possible in the month of December. Any other questions that we may have missed? If not, I think then we have finished the meeting and thank you for attending and uh, thank you for the very good uh, reports that are starting to pop up. So we are, we are getting uh, uh, much more uh, improved uh, reports these days. So this makes it much more fun for the TAs to look at them also. So just uh, uh, relaying their information to you guys. Yeah, it's great. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work. Okay, thank you.